you know when you're scrolling through the comments and you find one that's got like 182 replies for some reason and you know that there must be the most asinine argument happening and for some reason you feel compelled to sit and read through the entire exchange and then thumbs up all the comments that you agree with and then thumbs down all the comments that you disagree with because you now hate this person I think they're the world's biggest idiot um, which in fact reveals that you are the world's biggest idiot because you've now wasted so much time and we don't really get a lot of time on this earth um, but you've decided to dedicate yours to reading this argument that had absolutely nothing to do with you that was a question I think <laughs> one time I got stuck reading a very heated exchange on the bottom of an Instagram post of a girl that was riding a horse in a way that the internet peanut gallery found to be objectionable I specifically remember one comment thread that piqued my interest where someone had said something mean to this girl and she'd replied something along the lines of well at least I'm riding a real horse with a bunch of the crying laughing emojis riding a real horse whatever could she mean then the mean girl commenter had replied and I'm still a better rider than you with even more laughing emojis this girl's profile picture looked like she was hugging a horse's head so I clicked on her profile so that I could see what was what and I could make my own opinion as to which of these random children on the internet was in fact a better rider turns out she was hugging a horse's head but it was a severed horse's head on a stick thus the world of hobby horsing was revealed unto me and I've been mourning a lost career path ever since hobby horsing is exactly what it sounds like you ride around on a stick horse mimicking the behavior and movement of a real horse fun and whimsy ensues the modern hobby horsing sport began in Finland but it's very popular in Germany too because you guys just love to unashamedly enjoy very strange things shout out to the Germans you guys are great except that one thing you did it's definitely seeping into North America but it's not quite got the same gravitas that it does in Europe I found more clubs than I anticipated but they're mostly summer camps aimed at kids and they're about like team building and cooperation and all that kind of stuff if I wanted to learn how to be part of a team I wouldn't be riding a pretend stick horse alone in a field now would I <laughs> there was a Finnish indie film released in 2017 called Hobby Horse Revolution and then a video of the 2019 Finnish championships went viral and spurred a brief wave of attention some better known figures of the community get trotted out every so often and get treated to that kind of paternalistic yet deferential way non-Europeans treat Europeans where we think that they're backwoods idiots who've never seen indoor plumbing before but we're also very afraid that they'll put a curse on us a lot of hay gets made out of the alleged self-seriousness of the people that do hobby horsing where they apparently see themselves as being professional athletes whose talents rival real equestrians and that it's actually a more difficult sport than horse riding it is a real competitive sport like any other sport say uh, bowling rollerblading football some people try to understand i try to explain to the americans i am the michael jordan of finland um as far as competitive hobby housing goes and then the joke gets to be that they're so delusional that they can't tell when people are making fun of them and that the people making fun of them are actually better at hobby horsing than these professional athletes could it be that this community largely composed of children is welcoming to all because they're a bunch of nice friendly people who want to share their interests with the world and they know what it feels like to be rejected and made fun of no they're all stupid ha 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 i'm the normal one there's obviously a misconception that a fundamental part of hobby horsing is pretending that the horse is real which is what makes the idea of it being a real sport practiced by adults so ludicrous they think that we think the ho horse is alive which we do not we understand that it's dead <laughs> no 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 it's 2024 you can't say that anymore i feel like flexing your little smooth brain a bit would tell you that these people obviously don't think that they're actually riding a horse I don't know maybe it's just enjoyable to pantomime things that you like it's fun to take care of things and be nice to them I know that's a foreign concept to so many people also even if they did think that they were real 
the idea of an adult looking at a child and going, that toy isn't real, <laughs> sheep, is not the flex that you think it is. Arguing about whether or not something is a real sport is so boring and pointless, but what is interesting to me is that hobby horsing is gaining so much traction online, even though it's such an old timey thing to do. It's the perfect uber niche hobby to package into a short video, and it's kind of strange when you first see it, but oddly compelling, so you feel primed to go down the rabbit hole and just watch hours of it. It combines crafting and miniatures and collecting and roleplay and ASMR, and depending on your age, it can feel like looking at what your childhood play sessions might have looked like if you were a kid today, with 24 seven internet access and the ability to connect with other little freaks who like the same weird stuff you did, the more things change and all that. We don't quite have hobby horse influences yet, but I think it's on the horizon. I think I want Penny Farthings to be next. I just want to issue an immediate correction to that. Of course, Penny Farthing TikTok is already a thing. I don't know why I would be so foolish to imply that it wasn't. Um, but also I did fall down the Penny Farthing rabbit hole, of course, and I found out that in 2022, Jeremy the Vine went through a big Penny Farthing phase and posted a couple good TikToks about um, writing his Penny Farthing. And then that also led me to find out that he is allegedly, uh, as of March of this year, suing uh, the footballer Joey Barton for libel because Joey Barton called Jeremy Vine a bike n <laughs> Anyway, back to the video. <laughs> With niche hobbies gaining new audiences on social media and our evergreen desire to point and laugh at strangers, the world of hobby horsing is more accessible than ever thanks to the internet. If in-person meetups are about socialising and practising your craft with like-minded people, TikTok and YouTube have become tools for the solo hobby horses to document how they like to spend their time with their horses. You've got unboxing videos, people leaping over the contents of their garden shed piled up on their lawn, grooming ASMR, hair braiding tutorials. Social media is obviously a fertile ground for bullying and making incredibly inappropriate comments about children, but I'd say that hobby horses are a generally quite resilient group by virtue of being hobby horses. I smell bitch. One of the defining features of being a horse girl is not caring that other people think you're weird. And if anything, you kind of lean into it in like a normal people scare me kind of a way. So they're probably not a very rewarding community to bully because they're kind of immune to that shame induced social norm policing. I have heard everything already, so there's literally nothing that I haven't heard. My name is Nara Aralin, and when I do hobby horsing, I feel like there's no boundaries. Every formal group for hobby horsing is very vocal about being open to anyone and that it doesn't matter how old you are. By far the most visible group of hobby horses are young girls. There are some older members of the community, but it's mostly young women who have been in the group since they were kids and have just kept going into young adulthood. Adult members of the community also seem to be more focused on dressage as it's kind of a blend of dance and rhythmic gymnastics and it's also a bit more refined for the adult palette. When you look at the comments of a hobby horsing video, there will always be some adults saying that they wish this had been a thing when they were younger so that they could have kept riding around without feeling like they'd aged out of it. The mean comments are what you would expect, but I was pleasantly surprised to see more and more people asking how you start or saying that it looks fun and that they'd like to give it a go. If anything, the ability to film your hobby horsing in private without having to show your face means that you can kind of lead a double life online. Hobby horsing internet sensation by moonlight normal McCool teen by daylight. There has been content made about hobby horsing, but it's mostly that kind of ironic sincerity that a certain gender likes to do, or it's just adults making fun of children, which is always good stuff. Grow up, obviously young child. Stop having fun and spending time with your friends. Go make a parody TikTok like a normal person. I get that the meanest comments are probably coming from other children, so the goal is to reinforce their own lack of cringeness by calling hobby horsing 
bacon gay. But if you're an adult watching these videos, you are very aware that these are children and you're still choosing to make content off of them. It's also weird to think that these adults are essentially aiding and abetting in the bullying of these nice European children as they piggyback off of their virality. The videos where people pretend to do other hobby versions of sports are great because they'll do like hobby car racing. Yeah, we have that. It's called running. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if we had hobby bike riding? I like the comments that are pleading for these girls to try track and field instead, as if we're losing a generation of future Olympic athletes because they just can't quit tossing around. Also, this is petty, but every video making fun of hobby horsing uses the same ugly Toys R Us hobby horses that would have you barred from competitive hobby horsing for life. You wouldn't be caught dead at the hobby horse meet stringing along one of these old nags. On my video about Intuit, someone left a comment that basically said, America likes to make their own version of European horse breeds, but worse. And I feel like that applies to hobby horse making as well. This is a handmade, one of a kind piece of art that will be loved and cherished for years to come. This is a Michael Kors jelly flip flop. Hobby horsing also gets to be used as a symbol for the world these days where its status as a sport proves that we're all doomed and we've all strayed from God's light. Especially because it's from a Nordic country, so it gets to be used to show how strange and soft paying your taxes makes you, or whatever. Admittedly, the most mean-spirited comments come from other horse girls. True horse girls think hobby horse girls are giving equestrians a bad name and that they're what's stopping horse girl kind from being broadly accepted by society. We'll talk more about horse girl on horse girl crime later, but the Venn diagram of people that are in the hobby horsing community and also enjoy riding real horses is pretty much a circle. Also, with peace and love, queens, it's not the hobby horsing that makes normal people think that horse girls are weird. The call is very much coming from inside the house. It still gets on my nerves though to see people say that hobby horsing isn't physically demanding and that it doesn't require any skill because that's just obviously a lie. If you break down any sport or type of exercise into its key components, they're all silly and made up sounding because we made them up. And this goes for everyone, not just the horse girls, but if your athletic prowess feels undermined by people jumping over broom handles in their back garden, then that's a you problem. My personal hot take is that running around and jumping over things is just as physically and athletically demanding as riding a real horse. We just accepted that people pick up heavy ropes and do this, or they pick up a ball and throw it really hard at the ground, and they're both considered valid forms of exercise. I don't know why doing a very graceful jog on the spot is any different. I mean, I do know why, but that's a much, much shorter video. Most of the negativity around hobby horsing comes from real equestrians who think hobby horsing is cringe and get mad at the idea of it being a real sport, which I do kind of understand because there's still debate as to whether actual horse riding is to be considered a sport. As a group, you're all getting picked on, so you start infighting and try and distance yourselves from the true freaks. I suppose when you're a kid, you're hyper aware of what's considered to be babyish, so you want to distance yourself from that and make a big show of it to prove to yourself and to others that you are mature, even though you were totally pretending to be galloping around like a horse two six months ago. Adult horse people getting upset about hobby horsing are very strange though, in my opinion, and I think they're just jealous that these girls are doing something unashamedly that they used to get picked on for. As grown-ups, we really don't need to act like hobby horsing is going to dethrone horse riding as being the one true equestrian sport. Please have a bit more self-confidence. Unclutch those pearls for me. The same thing happens to people that collect model horses, where they get fake gamer girl for some reason. Even though I don't think anyone who collects briars or rides hobby horses hasn't actually engaged with real-world equestrianism, that's like the whole point. <laughs> you like something so much 
that you find a way to mirror it in other aspects of your life. Which is why we get model horse shows and hobby horsing get ready with me's where they pack a dewormer and a passport. The defining feature of the weird horse girl is our all-consuming obsession with horses. So to draw a line in the sand as to when that becomes too much or too weird is just so arbitrary and some kind of self-denial. <laughs> I think the meanest of the hobby horse haters will grow out of it when they become less sensitive about being compared to others that they think are a bit strange. I still think it's interesting to see that every group, no matter how niche it is, all thinks that they are the normal and polite ones and if only the strange unusual ones would calm down and stop being so weird then the rest of us would be accepted by society. The blue haired pronouns are holding us back. In researching this video it occurred to me pretty quickly that I needed to walk the walk if I was gonna talk the talk. It's all well and good preaching the validity of hobby horsing but unless I was brave enough to mount up in public. Fake fan, a fair weather friend, a fair merry weather friend for my black beauty heads out there. Black beauty hive assemble! I am a serial hobby collector so I figured I had enough access to random raw horse materials to be able to birth my own without having to invest anything other than my time which we all know is worthless. I probably shouldn't say that in his presence, should I? There's a definite style to a lot of the horses used with big benevolent eyes and nice wool manes. I guess that's the traditional look and I remember having one very similar when I was a kid that was called Hobby. My family also had a little black rabbit when I was a kid too. Can you guess what that was called? There are hobby horse artisans on Etsy and Instagram and a few bigger companies that mass produce them as well. There are also more realistic ones that are made out of foam and then get flocked. As many a hobby horse is delivered via home birth, there are plenty of tutorials that go over the basics of making your own. I watched loads of them and then completely forgot everything that I'd watched, so I just kind of winged it and I didn't do a great job, I'll be honest. But I tried, and that's what life's all about. Trying and failing. Could a depressed person make this? So they're made out of two flat headpieces, and then you kind of make a long strip that you sew from the front to the back to make a kind of couch cushion shape. You're supposed to have a tube part at the bottom of the neck so that you can attach the head to the stick, but I forgot to do that and just kind of added it at the end and it, it didn't look great, I'll be honest. So I knew I wanted him to have a white blaze, so I just kind of guessed whereabouts that would be on my strip. I'm really, I'm really mugging with my hands here. I think I'd had two coffees on an empty stomach, so I was bringing kind of a manic energy to this crafting session. So I'm sewing the strips together, and then I believe I'm going to show you a really super in-focus artistic shot. Yeah, perfect. You can completely see what I'm doing. Look at that. Wow. A natural. After I sewed the strips together, I pinned it to his face, starting with the blaze. If you looked at the pattern earlier and thought, Wow, I can't wait to see how she sews that mouth. Then you're going to be disappointed because I made a real mess of it. I won't get into it, but you're supposed to cut the edges when you're sewing straight fabric onto a curved edge so that it will lie flat and not get all bunched up and rippled. And I didn't do that. I don't know why I didn't. Sometimes I know I'm half assing something, but I just kind of assume I'm the chosen one and that everything will work out fine. And frustratingly, sometimes it does. So my laziness gets rewarded, but. Not this time! After butchering one side of his face, I sewed the other side to the strip and then turned him right side out. Initially, I was just going to let the cards fall where they may, but it was really bothering me so I went back and fixed his mouth to varying degrees of success. He's still kind of gormless, but it, it looks better than that. I had to deviate from my original plan not to buy anything, as filling him with fabric scraps made him too heavy. So I bought some fiber fill, some wool for his mane, and then a premium broom handle for five dollars from Dollarama. When I was in England last, Poundland had just started to sell things that cost more than a pound, but they were all behind the counter. Is that the norm now? I stuffed his head and began to feel some warmness towards him now because he looked equine-shaped, therefore friend-shaped. 
To make the main, you wrap the wall around the first brick thrown at Stonewall, and then cut it in half to get equal lengths. Then you attach a long strand of wool from the top of the head to the base of the neck, and then you loop the shorter pieces around it. I also gave him some bangs to try and hide the seam on the front of his head a bit. Look at him go. Whoosh, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Give him those emo bangs. Look at that. For his ears, I cut out four pieces of fabric and then sewed them into pairs. And then I put some cardboard inside to make them a bit stiffer. After I figured out where I wanted them to go, I hand sewed them to his head. Shh, he can hear us now. Originally I made these semi-realistic eyes because I thought the cartoony ones looked kind of weird since he's so business casual otherwise, but they looked really creepy and not cute, so I just went with plain black ones. It is what it is. This was when I went back to fix the mouth. I had to disembowel him and then restuff him, which made the fiber fill freak out and go all lumpy, so it kind of looks like he's got cellulite now. Finnish regulations state that the stick of the horse must not protrude past the buttocks as to not pose a safety risk, so I had to cut down the stalk, trunk, pole. I also figured out a way to attach the sheath for the stick and then attach it to the head. It's not pretty, but uh, whatever. Then I glubricated the stick and shoved it into his meaty, lumpy head and then wrapped twine around the joint to hide how messy it was. I put in a few stitches to make his ears look more cheerful. And with that, my creation was complete. Oops, sorry, let me uh, get your glasses for you. There we go. Oh, he's a good boy. If I were to make another one, I would probably tweak my design some, but for a first attempt, I think he's pretty swell. I did have some crisis moments as I was doing it where I thought, wow, I'm almost 30. Um, and this is what I'm spending my life doing. But then I realized that that wasn't in the spirit of hobby horsing. And I persevered. And I'm grateful that I did. Because now I have a beautiful son. Originally, I wanted to call him Daniel Nay Lewis. Because I was going full method for this video. But it didn't really stick. Because Daniel is not a good name for a horse. I figured that I would just refer to him as something. And that would just become his name. But I've just kind of been calling him him. Capital H I M M M. That was easy, even in short. I'm just doing this for fun. After birthing my beautiful boy, it was time to take him for a spin. Outside of competitions and hobby horse meets, hobby horsing is primarily done in one's backyard as to avoid unwanted attention. My backyard is lacking so i wanted to find somewhere private where i could gallop to my little heart's content i saw a lot of tiktoks that mentioned being afraid of being seen by teenagers and i'll be honest that was my biggest concern too it was raining a little bit that day so i guess that the park would be empty no 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 i'm not hiding him in a bag because i'm ashamed i'm simply protecting him from the rain my assumption about the weather was correct and we essentially had the place to ourselves. My favourite hobby horsing videos are filmed from a first person perspective, so it looks like you're riding the horse, so that's what I wanted to try and do. I tried to film with my regular camera first, but the footage was too shaky and the angle was wrong, so I switched to my phone camera and that worked much better. I didn't know how much time I had before teenagers would appear from the shadows to edge ball at me, so I just dived right in and did some laps of the field. It felt kind of awkward to start, but I'll be honest with you lads, I was having a bloody ball. Huge grin on my face, laughing like a mad woman, cantering around this field like my life depended on it. I'm not going to pretend like the people watching this video didn't also spend a large chunk of their childhood galloping around like a horse, so trust and believe that it is a skill that will come back to you at the drop of a hat. What I most had trouble with was trying to manipulate the horse so that his movements looked realistic and keep the camera still enough to not make everyone want to throw up. The head does move a bit by itself, but it needs some encouragement to shake around in the right way and give the impression of real movement. Artemis Hobby Horses on YouTube is a master at this, as you can tell when they're changing gates and they'll bob the head around to show the upward movement of a horse slowing down or speeding up. I thought some of it came from the rhythm of your steps and the fact that the stick is 
in your groin essentially but no you really need to wave the head around to get something more than an awkward shake i got a bit better at it as time went on but it is much harder than it looks mm. that makes me feel like a ventriloquist dummy I can do it like that. <laughs> Competitive hobby horsing is mostly divided into dressage and jumping. They do western riding and I've seen working equitation before as well, but jumping and dressage are the main ones. I was reading the official Finnish Hobby Horse Association dressage rulebook and that thing is intense. There are specific positions needed for the horse's head depending on the gait and the moves that you're performing and how many steps you should be aiming for in your pirouettes. Moves are graded from excellent to very bad and I feel like it's kind of like real dressage where they're very stingy with the points and I don't think that they would hesitate to tell you that your flying changes lacked balance and upward momentum. Don't worry Thule, maybe you'll make it to Worlds next year if you believe in yourself and Nostra Polvici. Does anyone else remember being told chickens don't ride horses to stop you from sticking your elbows out when you were riding? No. Kanat eivät ratsasta hevosilla. Kanat eivät ratsasta hevosilla. Do you agree? Olet huva hevonin. Other rules say that you need to hold the reins in both hands and that the outer hand needs to be on the stick and that you need to maintain steady bit contact at all times, which is great. Once you get to the advanced levels, then you need to ride with double reins as well, but they do allow for bitless riding. So hobby horsing is more progressive than real horse riding. They also specify that the rider needs to be wearing clothes. I was riding at Liberty today, so reins weren't an issue, and I was wearing clothes. So after I ran around for a bit, I wanted to try some more formal moves. In my head I was slaying, and I'd argue that you could tell what movements I was supposed to be doing, but any pro hobby horser out there is going to give me like a 2.5 out of 10. I was so absorbed by what I was doing that I didn't really notice if other people were about or if they were looking at me strangely. My pirouette was kind of good but I abandoned ship when I saw a guy with a dog looking at me weird and I had a brief moment of insecurity and weakness. I'm not above it folks, I'm not. If anything I'd say we've gotten used to people filming themselves in public and it gives them a kind of veneer of authority as if they must have a reason for doing that and you're the weird one for looking at them. Filming yourself is like carrying a clipboard. If you want to hobby horse in public, I'd recommend filming yourself and also make a sick hobby horse playlist to listen to instead of your own laboured breathing. I was having more fun just cantering around aimlessly, but I knew that I needed to jump over something to prove myself to you. For jumping, they have a traditional show jumping course and then they have a kind of puissance style high jump. Again, the official Finnish rules are a 13-page tome. I think the high jump would have been my forte because my friends and I would hold out a skipping rope like a clothesline and take turns jumping over it. But it wasn't any old skipping rope. It was a jump stick. Click, click, jump stick. Click, 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 jump stick. Jump stick, jump stick. Yeah, that's good. I feel like I was pretty good at tricking other kids into secretly playing horse with me. 1.4 meters seems to be the highest that hobby horses jump, which is incredible considering it's basically a vertical leap. Most of these kids are jumping at least shoulder height, which is crazy to think about. A big rule for jumping is that you need to be cantering throughout the entire course. And to be honest, I feel like this rule does not get respected enough. Not to be a purist, but a lot of these kids are just running at the jumps. I do feel like there's a bit of a divide in the sport between people who are earnestly performing with their horse and embodying the movements and their behaviour and those who just want to run and jump over stuff. I like it best when you can see the riders pulling the reins or when they stop and give the horse a pat after they have a good run together. I can also imagine that imbibing your horse with a personality can make it so that psychologically you can feel confident in them and their abilities and also think that they're just not having a good day if you're not performing as well as you want to. No mention of needing to wear clothes in the jumping rule book. You will be disqualified if your horse's head falls off though, which I guess is fair. As much as I wanted us to be able to jump 1.4 meters, 
I was quite concerned that my adult body would repay me quite harshly for doing so. The only thing I could find to jump over in the park was a steel bench right next to a bin, which did feel appropriate. Ideally, you're supposed to be jumping over something that will give way if you kick it so that you don't hurt yourself. If you're really serious, you can buy legit jumps, or you can muscle your dad into making something for you in the shed. That's what I imagine kind German dads do for their children. I steeled myself, gave him a pat, and together we soared over that bench like Captain Laraguibel and Wasso. Did you see that? <gasps> I'm a natural. Adrenaline surged through his little wooden body and we tried another time, but this time I hurt my foot a little bit landing and he banged his longer than regulation stick on the bench. So unfortunately our jumping career ended as quickly as it had begun. All in all, I spent about two hours riding around this damn field, laughing, gurning, mouse breathing, all the way. On the walk home, the bag of shame was no longer needed, so I carried him proudly in my arms all the way. Did I get some puzzled looks as I reintegrated back into society, stuffed horse head in hand? Well, yes, but it's Canada, so everyone kept their feelings of boiling, passive-aggressive rage to themselves. Maybe someone saw me out of the window and made a cringe TikTok about it. A full circle moment. Content begets content. I didn't set out to make this video in the hopes of persuading people to try hobby horsing, but I think that's actually what I want to do. I don't think I really need to extol the virtues of spending time outside or getting some exercise, but I found this to be way more fun than I have ever found running to be, and it just feels really good to be silly sometimes. Just be a little silly goose. Oh, thank you. Very kind. Maybe you're not convinced and you still think it's too strange for you, and that's fine, but please don't be mean to hobby horses when they come across your For You page. It's crazy that no one ever says this, but bullying is mean and it's like kind of bad and you shouldn't do it. So please don't be an adult that publicly bullies a child, even though the algorithm desperately wants you to. Let's work together to fight our base impulse to make fun of things that we don't understand, and instead unite against a common enemy. React content makers. Life's too short. Canter to work. Canter to the mall. Canter inside the mall. Canter out of the doors to the mall because they kicked you out for cantering. Canter down the aisle. Canter as you carry your loved one's coffin on your shoulder. Canter over to the like and subscribe buttons. Canter on Margaret Thatcher's grave. Canter your way into the hearts and minds of America's youth. Canter your way out of your meeting with HR that they called because your cantering made people uncomfortable. Canter into traffic. Canter in the mosh pit. Canter whilst you're riding a horse that is also cantering. Canter down the lighting aisle of a hardware store. Canter to divorce court. Canter out of divorce court. Divorced, presumably. Canter out of the grocery store after spending approximately $200 on, I don't know, four items. Look God in the eye and canter backwards into hell. It's a lot of doors, isn't it?